This Juju G podcast with Juju G yelling free the guys, always yelling free the guys. Today I want to do an episode today, specifically today, because this March to the today, May 3rd, 2009 is when I got locked up 15 years ago. I got locked up for a murder. And I could relive that moment. I could relive them events vividly in my mind like like it was yesterday. Like like nothing. And from my actions, from what I did, like so many people lost all type of shit. Like everybody lost everything that day. It wasn't just me. It wasn't just the victim's family. It wasn't just it was all type of shit. So so today, like I just wanted like to to explain that, to elaborate that and to elaborate where I'm at right now, where I'm going right now. So I wake up every day. My brother just got killed. Every day I would wake up and smoke just so I wouldn't have to feel that pain. The realization of my brother being gone. So every day I, I remember I rolled up, I brushed my teeth, I brushed my teeth. I sat down. I remember I was about to smoke and I get a call from somebody and somebody like, Hey man, them dudes outside. I'm like, what you mean? She's like, they outside right now. I'm like, all right. So me being what I'm, what I'm on already, I'm like, all right, cool. It just so happened that I was on the very next block, like literally like on the next block. So I go over there, you know, I peep them out. And I, my mind, my mind state was crash out, just to crash out and shit. Not knowing it then, but even though I, I was thinking like, I was thinking logically, like it was the crash out mentality. So I go over there. I see them. I'm, I'm behind them. I'm, I'm in the gangway looking at them. But I ain't do nothing for the simple fact that like a week before I ended up getting in the shootout. And I was with some friends I was with some of the guys, and when I got shot, like, they just left me on stuck. And, and and before I didn't mind, like, doing something by myself, but since that happened, since someone, like, they abandoned me and shit, I, it kind of, like, threw me off, threw my rhythm off, you know what I'm saying? So I felt like I needed somebody, like, like, you know, I didn't get a shot. I didn't go to the hospital. But, like, I felt like I needed something. But for some reason, like, it, it kind of shook me. Like, damn, I'm saying, like, I got caught slip. I really felt like I got caught slipping and shit. And then when people left me, that, like, left a feeling in me, like, I can't explain. Knowing that they could help me. So, now, I'm, 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 I'm looking at them. I'm looking at them knowing what's my intent. But I get the doubt in the back of my mind. So I go back. I go back to the crib. Call them loafing. Super loafing. Like, they didn't even see me. Like, I left. So, I go back to the crib. I'm calling the guys. Calling the guys like, damn, G. I'm saying like, what's up, what's up, what's up? Ain't nobody answering. It's super early, though. It's so, super early on Sunday morning. Ain't nobody answering. So I'm like, damn. So my little brother, he like, man, let me go with you and shit. Let me go. Let me go. I'm like, it's my little brother, though. So I get thinking, oh, you know what? I, I was doing shit at that age. So you know what? Come on. Fuck it. We going to go. I can trust my brother, though. This is what I'm thinking. So, you know, we go over there. The shit happened and shit. You know, caught, caught him slipping again. Shit happened. And we end up running away. You know, they they told where we ran to. Police come in. When they come in, you know, I'm telling my, my brother, like, don't say shit. Ooh. Well, my brother ended up telling on me. My brother ended up telling everything that happened and shit, blamed everything on me. But 
you know, then I used to be hateful. I used to be real hateful. Like, like he snitched on me, but as a see, looking at it now, that I was a big brother. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have even done that shit. I shouldn't have took my brother to go kill somebody. That's my little brother. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have ex- showed him that life. He passed away too. He passed away. So like, I think about it now, like I'm looking at all my actions, like, like all this shit is because of me. That's how I'm thinking now. And back then I used to be like, oh, you know, he snitched or whatever, but it was my fault because I brought him with me. I took a 14 year old kid with me to go kill somebody. And I used to be so hateful that I'd be like, I'm like, man, he's he's a rat, he's a snitch. And I used to I used to hate anybody to talk to him associated with my brother. And after they picked me up, after they locked me up, as I'm going to the station, they got me in a paddy wagon. As I'm going to the station, we riding. I see them beside me. I see them like there's like a little in the paddy wagon, there's like a little slit where you can see off the back. And I see them riding like a bunch of cars behind me. So I'm like, I'm thinking they're gonna shoot the, the whip up. I'm thinking they're gonna shoot the car. So I'm like, oh shit. So I tell my little brother, like, man, get down, get down, get down. So he like, what, what, what? I'm like, man, they about to they about to cheese this bitch up. They about to cheese it up. They about to spray this bitch. So, bro. He, he, we like get down and shit, you know what I'm saying? But nothing happens. So then I end up in the station. When I end up in the station and shit, you know, we cops glad I'm locked up. You know, they high fiving and shit like that, making fun of me. So when they making fun of me, I'm like, you know, like, I'm like, I'm, I'll be out and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking shit back. I'll be out and shit. This shit ain't shit. It's nothing. You know what I'm saying, like, I'll be out this bitch. So, you know, we talk, they do talk, like, oh, you're going to die, you know what I'm saying? You're going to die in prison and this, this, and that. The cops that I know and shit, like, they, I grew up, they know my family and shit, like, oh, you're going to die in here and this, this, and that. I'm like, I'm threatening them, like, bitch, I'm, I'm going to get at you when I get out. Like, you know I know where you live. So the cops tell me, like, they like, man, I'm going to be dead by the time you get out. I'm going to be an old man and shit. Like, I'm going to be ready to go. So we going back and forth. So... As we talking shit, I hear in the police kind of like, you know, there's a murder on 140th Paris. So I'm like, damn. That's my hood on 139th. So I'm like, man. And I know my people stay on Paris on 139th to 140th. So I'm, I'm tweaking like, I already know what's up. Like, it's one of my people and shit. So one of the cops antagonizing me more. One of the cops come up to me and he's like, he like, hey, you know Alex Solis? I'm like, damn. He's like, yeah, he he just got it and shit. This is what the cop tells him. He just got it and shit. So he's out there bad. He's stretched out. This is what the cop, this is 12 call, telling me shit. So I'm like, I'm when you get locked up, sometimes you be handcuffed to like a little like metal bar. So, so like they fuck with me like real bad and shit, like pissing me off and shit. So, you know, like, thinking about it now, I was mad then. I'm saying I felt some type of way then. Like, my uncle got killed. And now I think about it, I'm saying, like, damn, like, like when I got out, I'm, I, I see, like, his kids. And when I see his kids and shit, they grown. He got, like, five kids. He grown and shit. One of them locked up. The other one's out here doing decent. But I but I asked one, like, these my cousins. I asked one, like, damn, bro, like, you think you'd be different if your dad was here? He's like, he's like, hell yeah, probably because he used to be on my ass. I'm like, damn. And that's something I live with, like, they ain't got no dad. They ain't got no dad because of me. Like, I'm the reason they ain't got no dad. But 
Also, the other victim's family. Like, the wife came to court, and she she recommended me get 50 years. And she was asking because the daughters was like, oh, uh, who's going to walk me down the aisle now? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Take me to dance and shit. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? I really, to be honest, like, I think about it, but it, it weighs more on me with my people. I ain't going to say that, like, I'm um, just remorseful and shit like that because in my mind, in my mind, it's war. It's us or them. So, I know the consequences. They know the consequences. So, I ain't going to sit up here and be like, oh, you know, oh, I'm just super remorseful and shit because we both, we, we, we both know what we was on, I'm saying? So, so I ain't going to be like, oh, you know, like, oh, you know, like, oh, I feel sad, but I, I, I do feel, like, I do realize that, like, I fucked up day life, my cousins and them lives, my mom, everybody, loved, everybody to love me and shit, everybody was devastated that I left, everybody was devastated that I got snatched, but I got snatched because the shit I was on, the shit. I was on a one-way cruise, you know what I'm saying? I was on a one-way path of destruction. Nothing could stop me. No one could tell me anything. So being locked up, or even when I'm getting out, people people know what I did. People know what the type of time I was on. So people, people like, put me in a box. They think. Like, when they meet me, when they get to know me and shit, they be like, oh, man, like, I, I ain't think you was going to be like this. Like, I get it all the time. Like, I ain't think you was going to be like this. Or, man, you actually smart or this, this, and that. And that's the thing. Like, when, when I was locked up, I took a class, right? It's called The Seven Habits. And in this class, it tells you that people are going to do that to you. And I don't know if... It's, it's the book's called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in this class, no matter who you are, you just ain't got to be locked up. This book tells you that someone's going to see you. Someone's going to automatically, it don't matter who it is, they're going to put you in this box, put you in this mold, put you in this pattern. They're going to label you immediately. That's how people's brains work. Most people, I ain't going to say all people, and it's called a paradigm. Someone's going to put you in that paradigm. But in this book, it tells you that it's on you to reverse that. It's on you to cause that shift in someone's mind. It's on you to, okay, like I said, like okay, people people get to know me or people meet me and be like, man, I never thought that you was this way. I never, like, I would expect it. You to be rambunctious, ghetto, loud and some shit just because everything they heard or know, know of about me. And in this book, it says that to cause the shit, like, like, for instance, some dude walks in the train station, right? He got four kids. These four kids crying, throwing shit on the floor, just act, doing the most, acting out, just doing the absolute most. So, like, people on the bus are like, man, this dude is not saying nothing to his kids. This dude's not saying anything to his kids. He just got his hand, his head in his hands. So, someone gets the courage of like, hey fam, like these kids are acting so bad, like throwing himself on the floor, fucking shit up. These kids are acting so bad where he like, he taps him like, hey, hey, you ain't gonna do nothing about your kids. So the dude, like he looks up, he looks at him. He, like, snaps out of it, and he's like, what? He's like, man, you ain't going to do nothing about your kids? And he looks at him again. He's like, man, my wife just died. And instantly, the shift. At first, he thought he was a bad parent. I don't do nothing about my kids. I don't I don't discipline them or whatever. He thought all this shit. Everybody on the train thought all this shit. And then when he told them that, instantly, that fast was the shift. He thought all this about this man. And when this man spoke, the first words he spoke 
It was the shift. That's the same thing with me. That's the same exact thing with me. Like people, people know this. People see what they see about me. People hear and they know. And then they hear me speak. They hear me talk. They see what I'm doing. And I cause that shift just like that. Just like that. I cause that shift. Because they know every, every, it's public records. Everything I've done, I can't get no job like that. I got bullet wounds all over. You see one right here. Like, I got tattoos. Everything. So, so everyone thinks some type of way about me because of what they know, what, what my past and shit. But they see what I'm doing and I cause that shift. They hear me talk and I cause that shift. But initially, people put me in that box. And that's cool. That's cool. Like, at one time, I just so happened to stum off, st- stumble across a Muslim service, like on TV. I'm a God fan, man. You know, I believe in Jesus Christ. But I stumbled across this. And, like, for some reason, it makes me stop. Like, I stop on this, you know, it's Islam, I'm talking about Islam. Well, not at the moment. So when I stop on this, you know, he's talking, it's a very, very, I, I can notice, like, he's a very powerful, like, preacher. So he says, he says, you know, we invest in everybody else but ourselves. We invest in everybody else. We invest in other men. You as a man invest in other men. So he's like, let me give you an example. He says, go see Gucci. You put on Gucci, that's that's another man. Louis Vuitton, you put on Louis, that's another man. Mario Prada. Brooks Brothers, Fendi. Michael Jordan, Jordan, jump man and shit. You go to restaurants, Richard McDonald. Gordon Rams, Guy Fieri, it don't matter what it is, you invest in another man, but how many people invest in themselves? How many people bank in themselves? How many people actually, you know what, I believe in my, like, like, George Bernard Shaw said, some people see things as they are and as why. Like, damn, why shit like that? He said, but I dream of things that never work. Dream of things that never work and say, why not? Like, I'm that person and be like, I could do this, like, no matter what the odds. And like he said, like, we invest in other, we invest in other people. We invest in other men. We put all this shit. We spend our money on other people. Why not put all that shit in yourself? So when I get out, I thought, you know, I got, I started to uh, see so I'm like, man, what should I call it? You know what I'm but I remember that sermon. I remember that service. So I was like, my LLC, my business, my certified by the state of Indiana government business is Juju G. I invested in myself. Like, and, and, and like when I told my dudes, I'm like, hey, G, I got my LLC. They like, what's it called? And I'm like, Juju G. So they like, ah, oh, man, folks, he tweaked, he on some game, man, shit, whatever. And I'm like, nah, it ain't because of that. And I tell them the same story. Like, we invest in these other people. I'm investing in myself. And that fast, just like that, when I explain that, I see the shift. I see that I cause the shift. I cause the paradigm shift. And no matter what I've been through, I'm saying, no matter what I've been through, like, I know people are going to put me in that box. I know people are going to put other people in that box, like, on that day, on today, like, I fucked up all type of lives, all type of lives because of what I was hell-bent on doing. I was hell-bent on my brother's not here. Like, nobody else is going to be here. Like, not on the other side. I was hell-bent on, like, like, now that I see it, like, I caused so much pain just off the shit I was doing and people retaliating and like, it ain't even hitting me. It's hitting other people. So I'm like, damn, like, like I fucked up. Like people growing up with a dad, people lost husband, people lost a brother, a son. 
Like my, my my grandma had to go to her son's funeral because of something her grandson did. Like that shit that I think about now, that's the shift that I caused within myself. Like um when I was right there, like I went I went to the scene and everything. I went to the scene to check it out. And I could see everything like clear as day. I could see everything clear as day. I look at it, I remember. Like when I like the faces when you catch someone slipping. Faces like, oh shit, like they know it's over with. They know it's over with. And I wanted like, damn, my brother looked like that. When my brother got killed, the, the folks like, damn, fuck, like, like I'm out here loafing, like, like. And now that I realize that now. That I just don't think about me. I just don't think about my side. Like, I cause that shift within myself. I have to change the way I think. Because if you always did what you always done, you always get what you always got. And my main objectives is to free the guys, get somebody free. Like, because it's hard getting out. And me personally, I can see why people get locked back up. Cause it's hard. They don't give you that chance. They put you in that that they put you in that box. They don't give you no job. So or the job doesn't the jobs you get doesn't cut it. So I can see why people get locked back up. But it's out here. It's, it's here. I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Like I'm just telling everybody to get out. Everybody that gets out. Everybody that. Was in that jam and now they free. It's going to be hard. And we got one way of thinking. We got we we put ourselves in that box. We put ourselves in this paradigm shift. I mean this paradigm, but we got to cause that shift within us. So we can't have someone else shift if we stuck in the box ourselves. If we stuck in the mold, that's what it says in in the mold. Like the same thing, the same pattern. So we can't cause no one to shift about us if we ain't shifted ourselves. If we ain't moved out this box ourselves, we got to cause that. And that's what I'm saying. Like, invest in yourself. Don't don't get out here investing in other people. Invest in yourself. Believe in yourself. I invested everything into me. Everything. Everything. I believe in myself. I used to always tell people, like, no matter what, no matter what, I know I know, I know, I know. I'm not going to let myself down. Ain't no way. Let myself down? No way. So when you get out, all I say is like, cause that shift, man. Cause that shift because they're going to put you in that box. They're going to put you in that box. And when you get in that box, like it's hard to get out of, man. It's hard to get out of that, that same thing. So cause that shift in yourself. Then have other shit. Cause that shift with other people. When you cause that shift with other people, I'm saying that's when you already invest in yourself. That's when you know you full invest in yourself. Believe in yourself. I believe in myself. Believe in yourself. And with that, I'm yelling free the guys. Free the guys. Free the guys. Free the guys. Free black. Free Jew. Free Barnes. Free LA. Free Tito. Free Tello. Free had there, free fat boy, free diamonds, free Rome, free Larry, free everybody I ain't mentioned. Free the guys, free the guys, free the guys, free the guys.